Intel's changing how we design CPUs forever. Apple's changing how you perceive reality forever. And AMD can't change the perception that they're bad at software. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, June 6, 2023. And a little update. We're in Reese's bedroom again. I say nothing to you. We, we came back to drop him off from Computex, which he didn't actually get to go to. So Woo! this is just a weird trip. We went the long way around. But thank you to everybody for helping us hit 700,000 subscribers on the channel. It's much appreciated. It's also much appreciated that Intel is going to be changing how we design CPUs with them coming out with a paper announcing Power Via, which is essentially a way to get all of the little spindlies of chip design off the front and onto the back with them saying that the connections that you have to put, especially for power delivery has a huge impact and was previously an afterthought in CPU design because it really didn't matter a whole lot when you had so much space to work with. But now as you're getting down to smaller and smaller nodes, you need that space back. So Intel says that they are working on this they didn't fix it before because the old way is more straightforward and it also wasn't an issue previously. So this backside power solution is called Power Via and it should potentially be coming out sometime next year with them saying that the wires for power can take up to 20% of the real estate on the front side of the chip. And so moving it to the back allows you to have more space for CPUs and also better power efficiency with them specifically saying the Intel eCore design with Power Via demonstrates greater than 5% frequency improvement and greater than 90% cell density with acceptable debug times as Intel 4. That's a clock frequency boost just for moving wires. And then also you have way more space to pack in more cores. Hopefully this translates to more cores, better power, everything that you could possibly want in a CPU moving forward. Again, probably in 2025 is when the consumer might see something like this come out. But what you're seeing come out today is Jablo 4. It's Jablo 4 launch day, Reese. Yeah. Are you going to play it? Maybe. Maybe. Well, if you're looking to play Diablo 4 for its launch day, you should check out today's video sponsor, Jawa, because they're the place for you to buy and sell PC parts, gamer stuff. It's a marketplace by gamers for gamers. And actually being in South Africa, there's a service like this here, and it wasn't in America, which is why I'm thankful Jawa exists, because it replaces everything I missed about being here besides Reese. Jawa allows you to sell either your used parts and use that money for a future upgrade, or you could potentially partner with one of their verified sellers to build you a PC specifically for playing Diablo. They have their commissions build program where you can specify what games, what resolution, FPS you wanna run at, what's your price point, and they'll partner you up with one of their verified sellers that you can trust to build you a PC according to exactly how you want it. Or if you have a GPU lying around from a bygone era, like the 1080 Ti, you can sell that to Jawa directly. So whether you're looking for extra cash, you're looking to get a new PC, you're looking to enjoy some Diablo for this launch day, check out Jawa at the link in the video description, the place where you should be buying and selling your PC parts. Now let's talk about the PC parts that Apple wants us to buy, specifically starting at $6,999 for their M2 Ultra chip, which got announced at WWDC. It's going to be essentially an M2 Max fused together. You got two of them, just like the M1 Ultra was, but you can go up to 24 CPU cores. 76 GPU cores, 800 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth on 192 gigabytes of RAM, an absolute monster of a chip, to be quite frank. And it also has 2.5 terabytes per second of low latency interprocessor connection between the two chips. And this is going to be rolling out into the Mac Studio as well as the Mac Pro, which they announced. It's going to have all of the features that you've expect, like Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, 10 gigabit Ethernet. But the Mac Pro was the last remaining computer that Apple had on on Intel, it has now finally completed the transition to Apple Silicon with them announcing this bad boy. Again, starting at $6,999. I think for you to fully spec this out, it rocks in the, around the like $14,000 region, which isn't as bad as it used to be. Didn't it like go up to 60, 50, $60,000, Reese? Yeah, it was, it was. It was ridiculous, but that was because like you were adding graphics cards and stuff, whereas now everything's baked in. There's no support for external GPUs anymore, but it does have six open PCI Express 4.0 lanes, which is the whole reason you would get the Mac Pro over the Mac Studio is so that you can slot in whatever cards that you need to work. Hopefully they 
work on Apple. <laughs> but the Mac Studio probably gonna be a better bang for buck for most people having roughly the same specs, but just in a more cohesive form factor, you don't actually have any PCI expansion lanes. They also announced the 15 inch MacBook Air, which is gonna start at 1299. It's the MacBook Air, but slightly bigger. It can give you 18 hour battery life, 3.3 pounds in weight, but they did happen to drop the price on the regular MacBook Air down to 999, finally matching the M1 version. So it's a little bit cheaper for you to get the 13 inch version versus the 15 inch. Apple also announced some software tweaks. iOS 17 is going to have better neural net things for typing, live voicemail, a journal app, smarter Siri, a whole bunch of things that they're actually going to be working new implementations to airdrop. We'll leave links in the video description in case you want the fine details on all of that. But they also announced Mac OS 14 known as Sonoma, which is going to have widgets and new productivity stuff that they're going to be rolling out. But I think the thing that probably everybody here is most concerned with is the game mode that they announced because for the first time ever when you're playing a video game on mac os it will prioritize the cpu and gpu for the game that's the feature they announced there was so much stuff that they were announcing with ios 17 where it was like this is neat but you should have had this years ago and the game mode feels exactly like hottie does <laughs> and yeah the game mode just feels like this is obvious. Why wasn't macOS already doing it? But they did have Hideo Kojima on tap to talk about bringing Death Stranding Director's Cut to macOS sometime later this year. They also announced that Metal 3 will have a new API for you to be able to port things over. Something that they said took months previously can now be done in a matter of days. So hopefully more games come on over to macOS. Even though I like to crap on Apple for being bad for gaming, I think another player in the ecosystem would be good. You have Microsoft buying up all these game studios for Xbox. They're becoming a very tricky player. So if you have Apple coming in competing with Sony as well, this is this is a good place to be in. I like this. I just want more. I want more gaming on Mac. It's not gonna be good, but it's there. It could be good though. It just, if you look at what Valve did for Linux gaming, they were like, hey, what happens if we just spend time on software and port this all over? Wow, look at the Steam Deck. It can run games nobody ever thought could run on Linux. And if Apple with its trillions of dollars just decided let's make video games, they could do it. It's just a matter of commitment. They haven't gone there just yet. But the big thing everybody was anticipating at WWDC yesterday was the Vision Pro headset. That is the name of Apple's mixed reality, augmented reality device that's supposed to strap to your face and showcase your eyeballs to everybody. I hate this so much. Like I understand why they do it, but I feel like it's not cool. It's a, little weird. it's a little weird. Maybe it will just get used to it. And I'm just not ready to embrace the future, but it's going to start at $3,499. So my wallet can't embrace the future just yet either. They showed off the form factor. Instead of putting the battery into the actual headset, you have a wire connecting down to an external battery bank. It has tons of cameras, tons of microphones. It's got the little crown that you can find on the Apple Watch for changing whether or not you're in augmented reality or if you're in virtual reality so that you don't have to see the people around you. And that front facing camera is going to show your eyes when you want it, people to see that you can see them, but then it'll be cloudy when they know that you're doing things on your headset, which I don't like it. Still weird. Still weird. It looks very cushiony. They quoted the fact that they made all of the Apple watch bands and stuff as one of the reasons why they could get it to be so comfortable. I have heard good things about how it fits on the head. They also announced a lot of partnerships that are going to be coming out with apps, specifically Disney Plus will be there day one. So, you know, a $3,500 device to watch Disney Plus stuff in VR, provided they don't take it down. There are a lot of unknowns with this device. They didn't talk about battery life at all. Battery capacity was not a thing. They didn't give a specific resolution. They just said it's more than 4K per eye. They talked about how the micron size of the pixels is also smaller. And then I don't think they talked about refresh rate either. It was very Apple to not talk about the tech specs. Hopefully we get more details coming out, but it is not launching until sometime next year in 2024. But they did talk about how it's going to have things like optic ID, where it's going to scan your eyeballs like face ID. And it's going to process a lot of the things like your where your eyes are processing locally so that it doesn't deliver it to anybody else so that that information stays safe. They talked about Vision OS and how the software is going to be processed. There's supposed to be hundreds of apps available on launch. You can play Apple 
arcade games. It has the M2 processor. It has a new R1 processor that's going to be used for actually delivering all of the experience in real time. I've heard good things about the hands-on side of things, but I think we just have to wait and see how this works out in reality. This feels like it's a productivity device. One of the use cases they showed off was putting in your AirPods Pros 2 and putting this on on an airplane. That makes a lot of sense for being in your own little work environment, but I just don't know how many people are gonna be able to pick this up day one. Let me know if you're interested in the Vision Pro in those comments, and I know that you're definitely interested in UFD deals. Get over here. What deals you got for us, Reese? None. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Reese. You know what's a bad deal? Microsoft taking things away from you. They're getting rid of the Cortana app. You're welcome. You can't have it anymore. That that lady, she's she's done. And what's also done is the rumors about what AMD was going to do with Ryzen 8000 because they've come out with some official details talking about how it's going to be on the new AM5 socket, the, the one that's already out. They haven't officially committed to this, which is why this is news. They're, the AM5 socket's going to support Ryzen 8000. That makes a whole lot of sense. But they also detailed the fact that it's going to have Zen 5 CPU cores and Navi three and a half graphics. So not a huge step up in the IGPU department. But again, we're still waiting on APUs from AMD on the desktop with RDNA 3.0. So getting 3.5 a little later is not necessarily such a big deal, but this isn't earth shattering news. This is just kind of a confirmation of things we didn't know before, but kind of could speculate. The Navi 3.5 thing is the new detail, but AM5 gonna be supported for a little while. However, one of the things that Epic Rome doesn't support is staying up all of the time. You'd think a server chip could just run. Turns out that after 1,044 days, it decides, no, I'm done. I'm going to go to sleep now. You leave me alone. I'm dead. Sleep. He's sleep. It's a bug that AMD says that they will not fix. The details about this, I mean, it's easy to fix it on your side yourself in case you do need perpetual server uptime. It has to do with the CC6 sleep state being whack, which you can disable, or you could restart your computer every three years, which on a server, it could be possible. Who knows? But AMD still with the weird quirky little bugs that they're not going to change. And AMD with the weird software support that they still haven't quite nailed down. You might remember that they talked about HyperRX back at the launch of the RX 7900 series. This was supposed to be a piece of software that would put them in competition with NVIDIA for things like NVIDIA Reflex and all of the solutions that NVIDIA is bringing out that side. And they said that it should be coming out in the first half of 2023. However, that ends in a couple of weeks and AMD hasn't really said anything about it. It's supposed to combine a lot of AMD's technologies of super resolution, boost and lag to be a one click solution for you to get better support in video games to run it the way that you want to run it at faster frame rate with reduced latency all very good things, but as AMD continues to march forward, they continue to miss deadlines, as we saw with their laptop processors. Those didn't launch until May when they were originally supposed to launch in March, and now it looks like the software solution is also going to be delayed. And on top of that, one of the things that AMD still hasn't talked about, even though they just launched the 7600, was the fact that FSR 3.0, which is supposed to be their competitor to DLSS 3 with frame insertion, they also have not publicly said anything anything about that either. Seven months later, no release date, no speculation on when anything comes out. And knowing AMD, it's not because they're waiting to just drop it when it's ready. This is going to be a very long process for us to get there. AMD continuing to just tease things that they don't actually deliver on, which is a little sad. And I'm not sad because I'm here with Reese. This episode of Hot News is over. We're going to be back with one more Hot News here tomorrow with Reese. With me. And then it's back. To America. I'm gonna miss you. It's gonna be sad. Sad. Really sad. Bye.